and we will read from the Word of God tonight. And I will read, we read it already in Romanian, but I want to read it in English for those who understand it. From Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through. And there was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Verses 3. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was and was unable because of the crowd, for he was a small, was small in statue or a small man. So he ran on ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree in order to see him, Jesus, for he was about to pass through that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Verses 6, and he hurried and came down and received him gladly. When they saw it, they all began to grumble, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. And I, if I have defunded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today... Today, salvation has come into this house. Hallelujah. Because he too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. You guys may be seated. Amen. The word of God tonight says in the closing verse of the verses that we are reading tonight says this, and I will repeat it again, that the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, has come to seek you and I tonight, has come to seek us tonight in the house of the Lord and to save that which was lost. And there are people in this place tonight that the Lord is wanting to save. Hallelujah. There are people in this place and there are youth in this place. And not just youth, but the older generation as well. That you are bounded to addiction tonight. That you struggle maybe to love this God that we speak about. There are people in this place that are struggling to obey the very word of God. Or maybe as a youth or a young man or a young woman, we struggle to obey our parents. There are people that battle with sin. And I don't know what that sin might be for you. Or that struggle that you have tonight and you've come to the house of the Lord. But what I do know concrete is that Jesus is present, hallelujah, hallelujah, and Jesus wants to save you. There is power in the Word of God, church. Este putere în numele și în cuvântul lui Iisus Hristos în această sară. Amen. Și vrea să mântuiască, mai are loc și mai cheamă pe nume în această după masă. Pe cei tineri, pe cei mai în vârstă, Dumnezeu prin povestea aceasta, prin this story tonight, God is speaking and once again reminding us and showing us that, hey, I am here to save you. Amen. That that is what the gospel is about. And I want, and those who are stronger in faith, cei care sunteți mai tare în credință, rugați-vă pentru mine în timp ce aduc acest cuvânt care cred din toată lumea că Dumnezeu mi l-a pus pe inimă. Prin Duhul Sfânt și dorința mea, prin Luca, capitolul 19, să vedem că și noi, ca Zacheu, Dumnezeu ne cheamă pe nume și vrea să ne mântuiască și rugați-ne ca Dumnezeu să-mi dea putere. So tonight, we see in the verse 1, as we started tonight, it said, Jesus, he entered Jericho and was passing through. It's very simple. It paints a clear picture that Jesus Christ was in this city called Jericho and was passing through. Verses 2. And once again, this is a simple story. The little children at the front, 
the, the little kid that read out of the Bible, they know this story. They know it's a kiss. They know that the story talks about a, 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 a young man who was short in, in height, wasn't very high, was very short, and went to see this man that was passing through a city, climbed into a sycamore tree to see this man, and then Jesus invited him into his own house and said, salvation is in your house. So it's a very simple story. But tonight I said, and as I was preparing, I said, God, help me understand word by word, verse by verse. Help me relate it to today. Hallelujah. That those who are present at church would understand it. So verses 2, we're going to read now. It says, and there was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector. And he was rich. So the question that we can have tonight in place uh, as we start is, who was this man? Who is this man, Zacchaeus? It's very clear, according to the word of God, that Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. And a little bit of a backstory is that Zacchaeus worked for Rome and was actually a traitor to his own nation and to his own people in Jericho. And he was like an IRS, if I can say, of today, where many people don't like the IRS. We run from the tax collectors. So he, And not only was he a tax collector or an IRS worker, but like I said, he was a traitor to his own nation and was charging tax for the country and for the city of Rome. And besides the tax that Zacchaeus, and it's very important why I'm saying this, besides the tax that he was charging the people of Jericho for Rome, he started to charge his own tax. And the people in Jericho was basically powerless. They had no authority over, over Zacchaeus because he had the full support of Rome behind him. And he could tax whatever he wanted. And because he could do that, and because no one could stand before him, like the Word of God says, he was rich. And Zacchaeus was a very wealthy man. And like I said today, like back then, nothing much has really changed. And we still do not like the IRS. We still do not like tax collectors. So which brings me to the understanding that Zacchaeus, the man of this story, was probably and most likely despised by the people in his city. He was probably and most likely hated by the people around him because he was a tax collector. And because of that very reason, I believe strongly, and I believe we can all agree that he was probably a very lonely man because he couldn't go and worship with those in the synagogue. He couldn't be around those people because he was outcast and he was called a sinner and unclean. And that's what the people had probably about this man. And I very highly doubt that someone would have voluntarily decided to go and dwell in his house and to feast with him. But see, that's what the beautiful thing about this picture is and about this story is that the picture that the Word of God is painting to us is that to Jesus, it doesn't matter who you are. See, Jesus doesn't look to society. Jesus doesn't look and God doesn't look to the social people around us to see what's socially accepted today. Is it socially accepted for me to dine with this man? Is it socially accepted for me to call him by name? And to Jesus, he didn't care what people thought. Because Jesus, through the word of God, and God sent his only son to save that which was lost. Amen? Hallelujah. And the word of God says in Luke chapter 5, verses 20, uh, 32, it says, I have not come, I have not come to call the righteous but sinner to repentance. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 15 says, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance and full attention right now. Because it says Jesus Christ came into our world and into the world to save the sinner of whom I am worst. Or of whom I am cheap. He came to save you. Yeah. He came to save me. And he calls us by name. And I keep repeating that because I want us to understand that. Romans 6, 23, another verse says, For the wages of sin is death, 
But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we were condemned through our sin to death. Yet Christ came to give us life. Praise God. To Corinthians. And I'm coming. I'm specifically reading verses. Because I don't want it to be a message from me. I want the word of God to speak to us. 2 Corinthians verses 5, 21. For our sake he, Jesus, for our sake he made him, God made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin, a man that never sinned, so that in him, through Jesus Christ and in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. So once walking in unrighteousness, now walking in righteousness. John chapter 3 verse 16, like we all know it, is for God so loved the world. And for God so loved Mark, and for God so loved you, that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So praise God. So we see through the word of God, that God sent his son for the sinner, which is you and I tonight. So looking at the life of Zacchaeus, we can all agree that it doesn't matter who you are tonight. I surely do not know you guys. It doesn't matter what you're currently doing in life right now. It doesn't matter what you've done until now. It doesn't matter the sin you are struggling with. It doesn't matter the chains that have kept you captive and a slave to for so many years. Tonight, the word of God says that there is forgiveness for you and I. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He himself, Jesus, he bore our sins in his body, in his, in his body, on that tree that, uh, that we might die to sin. So die to our flesh, die to that addiction, die to that sin, and to live to righteousness that by his wounds we are healed. Hallelujah. So there is forgiveness for you tonight. And I remember, and I want to make a, a, a short thing, is I once posted that on Facebook, and I said, it doesn't matter who you are, there is forgiveness. It doesn't matter what you've done, there is forgiveness. Somebody else said, you can't just preach half the truth. You can't just preach that there is forgiveness. So tonight, I want to open up, and if you guys open up as well, to Romans 6, and we're going to read that there is forgiveness for the church tonight. And just like Zacchaeus, he was a, a, a tax collector. He was a sinner. He was rich from stealing from other people. That, that there is forgiveness just like for him. There is forgiveness for us. But there is another step that we ought to take after. And if we look at Romans 6 verses 1 to 2, it says, What shall we say then? Are we tonight the church or Mark? Am I to continue to sin that grace may increase? May it never be. May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live? And how can we who died to sin, like we read, who died to our sin, to our addiction, how can we continue to live in sin? Verses 6, knowing this, that our old self, through Jesus Christ alone, was crucified with him, with Christ on that cross, in order that our body of sin, you and I, might be done away with so that we would no longer be a slave to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. Verses 10 to 14 says, For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And pay attention to this, youth and dear church. Verses 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your body. Do not let that sin continue to reign in your body. Amen. Do not let that addiction to continue to reign in your body. So that you would obey its lusts. And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin. Because that's what you do. You give your bodies. 
And you give your life and your hands and your feet onto sin so that sin would, and your body would enjoy its pleasures in sin. As instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead. Hallelujah. Alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not be master over you. This is a work that only God can do tonight. Amen. It continues in chapter se- in verse 17 to say, but thanks be to God. Hallelujah. This is not a work that I am able to do tonight. This is not something that we are able to do on our own, but thanks be to God. Hallelujah. I feel like so often in the church we have forgotten the power and authority that Jesus carries in his word. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God. That through Christ Jesus, there is forgiveness tonight. And God is calling us to repentance. And we, as the word of God says, we stop letting sin reign in our bodies. And we decide to follow Jesus. And we decide to live for Jesus. See, so many of us Christians, we we say we're children of God. Yet we continue to live slaves to sin. And we continue to live the life that we've lived with absolute no change. There is no evidence that God really touched you because we continue to live exactly the same. And may the Lord help us, brothers and sisters. May the Lord help us that when we decide to follow him, that it would be taken with seriosity. Amen? Amen. Back to our story Luke chapter 19, we continue to read the uh, verses 3 and 4, and it says, Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was and was unable because of the crowd, for he was small in stature, or a very small man. So he ran on ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree in order to see him, for he was about to pass, for Jesus was about to pass through that way. See, Zacchaeus faced many obstacles, or Zacchaeus faced many trials trying to see Jesus passing through. But that didn't stop him. We understand that he was a very small man. And at this point, Zacchaeus might have heard of never seeing Jesus. And just like the multitudes in Jericho have heard of this man and was curious to see who this man was. Maybe until this point, Zacchaeus probably heard that this man was a blasphemer. Maybe heard that Jesus that was passing through town was a heretic or what, or many people would say he was a prophet. But also many people back in that time said and proclaimed that this man that was walking through Jericho was truly the son of God. So like many of us, just like Zacchaeus, naturally When you hear such a thing, and when you hear of such a man walking through town, we would also like to participate at that event, at that that, that, uh, walk or whatever was happening. But remember, Zacchaeus was a small man, and he was trying to pass through the multitudes of people, trying to find who this man was, trying to find Jesus, trying to maybe talk to him, or maybe just see him, or maybe see him to understand the truth for himself but was faced with many difficulties, and just like Zacchaeus tonight, we face many difficulties and obstacles trying to find Jesus. See, what's so encouraging is that Zacchaeus never gave up. Praise the Lord. She nu s-a uitat înapoi. S-a dus tot înainte cu piedicile, cu, cu, cu greu ce o, o a avut, că era un om mic. De multe ori noi ne uităm în urmă și ne este greu și renunțăm și dăm înapoi. But Zacchaeus never did that. See, this message is not just for the young people, but it's also for the older generation. This message includes us from whatever age you may be to whatever age you may be, uh, from 16 to, six, to 60, if I can say. This message is for us. 
And tonight, time is running out, but tonight there are obstacles that we face. And maybe, and listen, because I know there are a lot of businessmen in this place. Maybe on your journey to meet Jesus, your obstacle and your trial is money. And that money is hindering you from entering and knowing and seeing Jesus. We read a chapter before in Luke 18, verses 18 to 23, of another young man that struggled with money. And I'm not going to read it because time is short, but he said, he comes to Jesus and he says, what do I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus said, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother. And this young man, this rich young man said, I've done all these things. I've done these easy things. I've kept these commandments. And Jesus said, there's one thing that you haven't done. Sell everything you have and give to the poor. And this, the word of God says that he walked sorrowfully away, upset. He was extremely sad, the word of God says. And he couldn't obey Jesus completely according to what Jesus was asking of him. So tonight, there are people in this place that that obstacle might very be money. That God has blessed us with businesses. And God has blessed us with finances. Yet we forgot from where we came from and now we become very greedy. Maybe that obstacle for you tonight is pride. The word of God says in James chapter 4 verse 16, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Maybe tonight your obstacle, just like Zacchaeus, is pride. You're a prideful man. I'm a prideful man. Look at me. Who am I? What have I done? Look at me. Maybe your obstacle is passions. Your passions, uh, you start to idolize your passions that you have for the future. Maybe it's your goals, you're too focused on the wrong things and you can't get to Jesus because your focus is on something else. Maybe it's your desires that are directed somewhere else. Maybe tonight you're on your road to see Jesus like Zacchaeus was and your obstacle is sexual morality. And your obstacle for the married men or for the married women is adultery. And we keep on failing and we keep on falling on our journey to see Jesus. And you are suffering where nobody sees you. See, whether you're a young man, young girl, or an older or in part of the older generation, a father, a husband, a wife, or a mother, vice versa, it doesn't matter who you are, I want to tell you tonight that when we continue to live in these obstacles, when we continue to live in these trials and in these sins, we are giving ourselves up to death. I'm not trying to smooth, talk and sugarcoat the word of God. The word of God is yes and amen. And when we continue to give our lives into these things, sin is sin, the word of God says. And sin leads you to death. And death leads you to eternal separation to God the Father. And that's a scary thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 18 to 20 says this. And listen, dear youth. The word of God says, flee from immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside of the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? So it's not your temple. It's not your life. It's not your body to destroy. And it's the, where the Holy Spirit is, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own. For you have been bought with a price. Therefore... Glorify God through your body and commit it to the work of the Lord. 
Luke chapter 19, verses 5. And I'm rushing through because I really don't have time, but verses 5. And when Jesus came to that place, so we understand that we face obstacles trying to meet Jesus. And my encouragement for you is don't look back, continue to run forward. Amen? Verses 5. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for today. I must stay at your house. So Jesus is walking through Jericho. Zacchaeus is a small man. He's faced with obstacles. He's faced with trials. But he runs ahead knowing that Jesus is about to pass through another area. And now at this point of the story, Jesus arrives at that sycamore tree where Zacchaeus is waiting to see him. And to his surprise, and this brings me joy. And I hope that it brings you by joy because I've mentioned it already a few times is that Jesus comes to the tree and calls him by name. Wow. When I read that, I was like, oh my goodness. Jesus didn't just say, stranger, come down. Young man, come down. Tax collector, come down. Sir, would you come down? But instead, he calls him by name. And other people would run from this man, yet Jesus comes to him. And not only does he come to him, to a hated man. Yet the son of God comes to Zacchaeus and says, Zacchaeus. And that's, that's encouraging for me when I read this, and it should encourage you, the church, is that we have to understand that Zacchaeus was a horrible man. And a sinner, if we can say. Yet though he continued and was living in sin, and though we continue to live in sin, and we are sinners, Jesus doesn't forget our name. And in our sin, he calls us and says, Mark, I want you to come down but hurry up and says, Mark, I love you and I paid a price. Hallelujah. And invites us to come. The word of God says, he looked up and, when, and, and he looked up and said, Zacchaeus. And tonight put your name there, Mark, Rebecca, Loredana, uh, David, Joseph, Priscilla, whoever you may be. He says, you I call by name. And I don't say, whenever you have time, take your time, step down slowly, get from the tree. Jesus says, hurry up. Hallelujah. Hurry up, the word of God says tonight. Hurry and come, turn away now. I want you, I love you, I died for you. And it's beautiful so far, yet continues. And then Jesus says, today I must stay at your house. Jesus is inviting himself into Zacchaeus' house. He's inviting himself into the life of Zacchaeus. And he says, for today, I must stay at your house, Zacchaeus. Or for today and tonight, Jesus says, I want to dine with you, Mark. I want to dine with you, dear youth. I want to lead you. I want to guide you. I want to live in your life. I want to invite myself into your life. But would you open the door to your heart? So tonight there is hope, and there is hope in Jesus Christ. And my time has run out, but if I can say one thing, and I hope the next brother continues for what the Lord has put on his heart, is that from that moment to the end, the Bible doesn't write down that Jesus had a conversation with Zacchaeus. It doesn't say that, he told him to repent. It doesn't say that Jesus said, you're a sinner, you're a tax collector, you need Jesus, you need to turn from your addiction, you need to turn from, your, from being a thief, you need to change, and you need to accept that. It doesn't say that. Maybe, maybe possibly they had a conversation from verses 5 and onwards. And then 6 says that they hurried, he received him gladly, and then they went and the people were commenting, but then verse 8 
is what is amazing. So from verse 5 to verse 8, it doesn't say anything like that. So I want to believe that Jesus didn't even have to tell Zacchaeus anything. Because Zacchaeus, when he met with God, the Son, when he met with Jesus, when he'd seen Jesus, when he heard Jesus, when he heard Jesus call him by name, he changed it didn't need some sophisticated message. It didn't need some sophisticated example to, to tell him or to describe to him or to preach to him a long message of 30 minutes. When Zacchaeus met Jesus, he said, I repent. And we see this through his attitude because Zacchaeus says in verse 8, Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, uh, Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. And if I have defunded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. See, we see the character of Zacchaeus instantly say, I will give everything that I have to the poor. I'll give half of what I have to the poor. And whatever I stole from the people, I give back not what I stole back. Not what I stole, but I give him back four times. I would like to see something like that happen in our church tonight. I would like for the church, for my dear youth, for cei mai în vârstă, când stăm înaintea lui Dumnezeu, nu trebuie să auzim o, 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 o predică sufisticată. Nu avem nevoie că când stăm înaintea lui Dumnezeu și când simțim și tu Sfânt se coboară în adunare și prezent și ne vorbește, de, ne aduce la o stare de pocăință. Aia face puterea lui Duhul Sfânt, aia face puterea lui Dumnezeu. Nu avem neapărat nevoie de altceva. Dumnezeu lucrează cum vrea El și El este a tot puternic. Dumnezeu nu este schimbat. Vedem prin Zacheu și prin viața Lui că Dumnezeu nu s-a schimbat. Aleluia. Și Zacheu, un om mic, un păcătos, s-a întâlnit cu Dumnezeu și s-a predat cu toată inima. Și vedem versetul 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. But verses 9, today, ask this. Mântuirea a intrat în casa ta, Zacău. Today, salvation has entered into your house. That is what the presence of God does. And if you were a sinner, bound to addiction, struggling, see, as a Romanian community, we have the ease and And the obicei mai urât, poate. Și totdeauna dăm cu degetul în alții. Că ăla este așa, că ăla este așa, familia e așa, copilul ăla așa. Și de multe ori nu ne uităm la viața noastră. Poate Dumnezeu în această sară și cred din toată inima, nu numai poate că Dumnezeu ne cheamă pe fiecare după numele nostru. Că și un Dumnezeu care ne iubește și care ca și Zacheu vrea să zică același lucru, că mântuirea a intrat în casa ta de azi. The word of God is here to save. The word of God is here to change. The word of God is here to straighten and to help us, to guide us, to lead us. And my one desire My one desire, dear youth, please listen to me, is that you would encounter the same Jesus that I encountered. Hallelujah. That you would encounter the same Jesus that your parents encountered. I will end with this story. There was a young man, and I don't know if you guys have heard of him, Joshua Diak. A young man, 17 years old, in Chicago, in a Romanian church, who unfortunately through an accident, passed away at 17 years old. Un tânăr din Chicago, la 17 ani, numit de Joshua, a fost într-un accident și 
și-a pierdut viața și stă cu Dumnezeu și s-a întâlnit cu Dumnezeu. Un tânăr de 17 ani. Tânăr și bucuria mea este că am auzit că tânărul acesta, prin biserica, a fost o mărturisire. Tânărul acesta a fost pregătit să se întâlnească cu Dumnezeu și mulți dintre noi nu suntem pregătiți să ne întâlnim cu Dumnezeu. Și un tânăr de 17 ani l-a iubit pe Dumnezeu, s-a dedicat cuvântul lui Dumnezeu, s-a dedicat închinarea în biserică, slujba în biserică și Dumnezeu l-a găsit vrednic să-l cheamă acasă. Oare suntem noi gata în această seară pe acest, să auzim trompeta cum sună pentru viața ta și pentru viața noastră? Să ne întâlnim cu Dumnezeu. Are you prepared? Age is not a factor. Whether you're 16 year old, whether you're 60 years old, whether you're 18, 19, 21, it does not matter how old you are. Today could be that last day and I cannot express it enough that we as a church and as Christians need to repent because what is happening in our churches is not what God necessarily wants maybe because I remember the stories and I, and I, I, I apologize that I'm taking a little bit more, but I, I remember the stories și mi amintesc de povestele mamei mele și cei mai în vârstă din biserica, că cum era biserica în urmă cu 20 ani de zile, cu 10 ani de zile, cu 30 ani de zile, cum, cum, cum se închina biserica în România, de unde ați venit? Și după aia mă uit astăzi și parcă ved că oamenii se plictisesc în adunare. Parcă ved că mai mulți fug de la biserică decât să alargă în biserică. Și cuvântul Domnului nu s-a schimbat. Nu s-a schimbat. Și avem nevoie, dacă vrem să mărturisim sau nu, avem nevoie de o trezire în adunare, în, în bisericile noastre. În bisericile române avem nevoie de o trezire. Și trezirea asta o face numai Dumnezeu prin Duhul Sfânt și prin Cuvântul Lui. Atunci când ne cheim, atunci când venim înaintea Lui Dumnezeu cu sinceritate. Adu din nou, Doamne, pasiunea aceea peste noi. Râvna aceea, dragostea Ta față de Tine. Ca tineretul casei. Și cei de afară și cei pierduți să-L vadă pe Iisus Hristos prin noi, Aleluia. prin viața mea, prin trăirea mea și prin umblarea mea. Dumnezeu să vă binecuvânteze în youth. Take it serious. Revelations 15, 16 that says that Jesus is coming. You have been called tonight. The word of God has spoken to you. And we have no excuse when we stand before God. And we give account for everything that we've done. May the Lord help us. Amen.